Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Nice to have you here. Today's video is going to be a very old school makeup tag. So this is going to be the perfect palette tag. I don't even remember whose video idea this was originally, but if I find the original video, I will of course link it down below. I have once done this tag to my Finnish YouTube channel, but because I have a new channel, I wanted to do a new version. All of these palettes I'm going to talk about are cruelty free, but most of these are not vegan because I have bought them before. I started to buy only vegan cosmetics, but all of these are cruelty free. So the first question is best packaging and this goes hands down to Seattle London. So I have one of their palette. I have their Olivia Palermo palette. This one is the first one. This one is not available anymore, but in case you haven't seen this before, it looks like this. It has mainly rose gold and plummy shades. They do still have palettes with the same layout and I really appreciate it because the packaging is very sleek and it's very elegant but it has still a lot of product. So this one has 12 grams in it and for comparison the Too Faced Chocolate Bar has 13.3 grams in it. So this Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette has only 1.3 grams more and see the chocolate bar is much bigger and much bulkier and there is almost as much eyeshadows in these palettes. I really do appreciate it when this one is so sleek and small, but still there is a lot of product. I really like this and I think this packaging is absolutely beautiful. It's very elegant. They do also have those bigger palettes, but most of their palettes are like this. Okay, the next question is best color payoff and I must say that this is the Boho Gipsy palette. Nowadays it's not unusual that a palette has a good color payoff and we expect that. We don't want to see unpigmented shadows anymore, we want some pigment. And this one definitely is pigmented. Um, I want this from a giveaway a couple of years back and I wasn't expecting that much because this one is a um, natural cosmetic palette. So I was like, yeah, that probably will not be that pigmented. In case you haven't seen this before, this has two layers in it. This one is mostly mattes, except that the white shade is shimmery. And this one are all shimmery shades. They are so pigmented. Only the shade that is not very pigmented is the plum one here, but plums are quite difficult to do. And this one is vegan, so there is not carmine in it. But other than that, these are so pigmented. I remember first time using this shadow, this white one. I thought that it's a uh, matte shadow, because the other shades here are matte. I didn't swatch it before using, so I took it quite a much to the brush and put it on my brow bone. And holy shit, it was so pigmented and <laughs> I like some satiny brow bone highlight, but this one is like white metallic shade. It's so pigmented. As you see, I barely touch it and it's so freaking pigmented and I have this metallic white sheen <laughs> under my brow bone. I tried to blend it out, but I had quite much brow highlight going on that day. But definitely this was surprising how pigmented this is for a natural cosmetic palette. Like you see this brown color here, I barely touch it. And wow. This is very nice palette. I think I should do a review of this. The next question is most versatile. So I do not have any of those palettes that has all the shades of rainbow. Uh, I should buy one of those and I think I will buy one of those from BH Cosmetics, but for now I don't have it. I mainly have very neutral eyeshadow palettes, so I had to pick up this most versatile palette from my neutral palette collection. But what palette I think is the most versatile of the neutral palettes that I do have is this BH Cosmetics Carly Bible Deluxe Edition palette. So I think this is surprisingly versatile. When you look at it, it's, it's nothing so exciting and nothing so new. But there is three rows of shades here. So the first row is like this orangey and pinky, very warm toned shades. And the other row is like plummy sage. And then the third row is like this very, very basic, neutral, classic shades. 
I definitely have got many different looks with this one and I really like this. And it also has many highlights, they can be used as eyeshadows as well. The next question is best for traveling and I actually have two palettes for this question because I always travel with these two and usually I take something else with them but these two are something that always travel with me. And the first one is the Balm Balm Voyage 2 palette. I originally bought this to be my travel palette and it certainly has served well. So this has um, nine eyeshadows, a highlighter, a bronzer, two blushes and two creamy blushes or lip products if you want to use them as in lips. But I don't use these, these two, they actually have been quite dry. But the other shades I have used, I usually do take some other palette with me. Uh, when I'm traveling, but I also have traveled only with this palette and I have gotten very different eyeshadow looks So yeah, I think the shade selection is nice. They are not my favorite eyeshadows ever But what I really love about this palette is that these four different face powders are so good And you know, I don't have to take so much single products with me when I have this palette So this highlight is basically the same thing as Mary Luminizer and this Bronzer is the same thing than Bahama Mama and those are a couple of stable products in my makeup collection They are my absolute favorites like I really love them I actually have today on Mary Luminizer as my highlight and I have contoured today with the Bahama Mama bronzer I also love these blushes so the other blush is this peach shade blush and the other blush is a little bit more rosy So there is warm toned and there is cool toned blush. I usually take also some neutral brownish blush when I'm traveling because those type of blushes are my favorites but then I don't need any more blushes so yeah I think this is excellent traveling with and this is travel themed another palette I always take with me when I'm traveling is the elf matte for matte palette so I am not that much into all matte palettes just because I usually like using shimmer shades also in my eye look but this palette, why I think this is so good at traveling, is because this has so many sage. There are so many palettes that don't have the perfect brow bone highlight or the perfect crease shade or whatever. And this palette does have all of those sage I could imagine. And this one is so small, so I think it's good size for traveling. And what I also like <laughs> about this palette is that it's so affordable so I really don't have to worry that it, if it breaks or something. Because you know when I'm traveling it's more likely that I break my makeup. The next question is biggest regret. And this one actually I didn't buy myself. I won it from a giveaway. So I don't, I don't have regrets like buying this but if I had like bought this with my own money I would definitely regret it a lot and I do not like this palette. I think it's disappointing. So my biggest regret is the Tarte Tartlet eyeshadow palette and this is the original one with all matte shadows. This actually has been in many people's disappointing products video and I think Tarte eyeshadows in general are something that you either like them or not and I certainly do not like them. So this is an all matte palette. It has some neutral shades and some plums. Nothing really warm toned is going on in this palette. Quite neutral. Uh, I have mainly kept it because of those plummy shades. I think these shades are so difficult to work with. I have to use twice as much time in blending when I'm using this palette and it's just too much work for me. Uh, I anyways use quite much time blending my eyeshadow. And with this one I feel like it takes forever me to do the eyeshadow. And it goes on patchy. Like, I, I'm never happy with my eye look when I'm using only this palette. I'm just, sorry, no, I don't think this is good. And what I think is weird is that my palette smells quite bad. I don't know what it is. Like, ugh. This is definitely not scented. I have heard that the Tartlet Toast palette is scented. This definitely is not, but I'm not sure if these have gone bad or what. So I will definitely be decluttering this one soon from my collection. Um... I just think this is not good quality. I would expect much more for this price tag. 
The next question is best color names and this one goes to the Balm Balm Voyage 2. I know I mentioned this earlier, but I think this is so genius. So all of the names means welcome in some language. Here is actually welcome also in Finnish. So in case you didn't know, uh, this brown chatiny shade, which is actually one of my favorite eyeshadows in this palette, uh, that is for Finnish and it is Tervetuloa. It's actually quite fun when I watched reviews of this palette when I didn't know if I want to buy it or not uh, to watch people trying to say it like they, most of the people who speak English as their native language are like Tervetuloa, but no, it's Tervetuloa but I personally have no idea how I should pronounce these blush and these names like no I think it really was genius from the farm to put welcome in many different languages in a, you know, travel themed palette. It was so genius. And I do think that the balm is very good with shade names all together as the whole brand. Okay, the next question is my least used palette. And this one unfortunately goes to the balm Mead Matte Trimony palette. This one is very beautiful palette. It has some gorgeous warm tone shades in it, but as I said earlier, I'm not a biggest fan of all matte palettes because I definitely like a shimmery eye look. I always use matte shadows, but I usually like to put something shimmery onto my lid. And that's why I usually am not that much into all matte palettes. So this one I haven't been using as much as I should. I definitely want to use this more. This is absolutely beautiful palette. I want to get more use out of this. I think I have only once used this, like only this palette to create a look. I definitely have been using this more um, with shimmery shadows, but usually still I pick out something else than this. I also have the Meet Matte Nude palette, that one I have been owning much longer. So I have been using that one more, but this one I have been using so little and I definitely think this should be used more because the quality is very good. So I definitely will be challenging myself to use more this palette. Or if not, if I don't use this more, I will give it to somebody else because this is not vegan and I don't want to keep products that are not vegan and what I absolutely don't love in my collection. In case I don't get use out of this one, it's probably better to give it to somebody else, but I definitely should use this one more. Okay, then there is the last question and this is most love, most used and de desert island. So I have two palettes here. So my most used eyeshadow palette is hands down this Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. This was my first high-end eyeshadow palette and I absolutely love this. This is so beautiful palette. So everybody knows what this looks like. This has this warm toned burgundy shades, these warm browns in it. It's absolutely beautiful and I have used this so much. This was my first high-end palette and I have gotten so many different looks from this palette. And I absolutely love this. This has very much sentimental value to me. But the palette that I love absolutely the most, and if all my other palettes was taken away from me and I could keep only one, only one palette, it would definitely hatch down be Urban DK Naked Smoky Palette. This has the most sentimental value to me and that's why this one is my all-time favorite palette. I definitely haven't used this like the most. I have used the Chocolate Bar more, I have used the original BH Cosmetics Carly Bible Palette much more than this one, but this is my party palette and I know it sounds like stupid, but this is so important to me. In case you don't know, I listen to mainly electronic dance music, mainly hardcore, little bit hard style, little bit heavier than hardcore, not that much terror, it's, it is, it is nice at parties, but at home it's maybe a little bit too heavy for me. So, I like to go into hardcore events and festivals and this one is something that I always do my makeup when I'm going to an event. So this has seen so many good parties with me. So this is definitely my favorite palette. Last year I was at the first time in the Defcon 1 festival, which is the biggest harder, harder styles festival out there. So I had this palette with me and I every day did an eye look with this palette. This is so good. First I didn't even like this palette because I was not that much into these cool toned eyeshadows, these silvers, but 
If I do a silver eyeshadow, I will definitely do it to the hardcore event. And if I could keep only one palette for the rest of my life, it would be this. Like, I would I would not even miss the other palettes as long as I could keep this one. Okay, so that was my version of the Perfect Palette tag. I thought that I might do the Perfect Palette 2 tag very soon, because I love doing and I love watching all different type of tax videos. They are so fun and you get to hear other people's opinions of certain makeup things. If you would like me to do some special tag, please let me know down in the comments. And thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please put thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I do beauty videos that are cruelty free. So yeah, that's all for today. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching and bye bye.